Hi sewing friends, my name is Karina from Lifting Pins and Needles and I'm super excited to bring you my experience at my first ever craft fair that I've ever attended. Um, this is an event that's uh, organized yearly in Sao Paulo and it's called Mega Artesanal. And it's been going on for more than 10 years I believe and people from all over the country come, from all over South America vendors come to attend. And um, I'd known about it and I was lucky to get a slot into a bus that went, um, that took a lot of local ladies over there. Uh, so yeah, I'm super excited and um, I asked in my previous video if you wanted to see and I got a lot of different re replies. Basically the theme was enjoy myself and only film if you can or just snap a few pictures and I definitely went over there open-minded. Um, I was also worried about safety. Um, I didn't really know if it was going to be too crowded or if it was safe for me to be whipping up my phone at all times and you know. Um, so I was going to assess that as I, as I got there. Turns out the environment was super safe. There was a lot of people but I didn't ever feel physically like crowded you know. And there were so many people filming and snapping uh, pictures and it was, yeah I felt safe. So um, the place was huge, huge, huge. Um, I got a really early start, went in a bus, uh, met some ladies there during the ride um, over there. It was about two and a half hours. You wouldn't believe like when we got to the, the uh, venue, uh, we were in a queue of buses, you know, in, for about 20 minutes, just trying to get into the parking lot, like bus after bus after bus. I couldn't believe it. <laughs> And there was another entry for like normal cars with people, you know, just in their cars. So I was, I was really excited. I knew this thing was huge. Um, luckily the queue to get in wasn't that bad. It went by super fast. I was able to get my ticket and, and hop in there. Um, once we were all in there, all the ladies went their separate ways because they all have diverse areas of interest. So it's not really practical to tag along a group. I wouldn't feel comfortable tagging around um, along with a group either because I'm super independent and um, I like to see what I want to see and how long I want to see it for and I don't like to depend on other people to like stay in one area or move to the next you know I'm, I'm quite a loner like that um, but you know we have, we have different styles and I'm quite happy to hang around by myself the whole day so it took me about maybe three hours to walk around the whole thing i did that i enjoyed it i took everything in and then when i went on my second round i filmed a few clips for you so um that's what's coming in now uh, with a little voiceover and then i'll back to show you all the little goodies i got this is the entrance where i came in where all the people arriving in buses were coming in I noted there was a lot of space, a lot of lighting, everything was super clean. Um, yeah, so that's just a view. There I am, very excitedly smiling at all you, but I didn't talk. <laughs> it was just too loud. Here we see some ladies crocheting, so there were different classes everywhere. So they were all basically doing the same thing there. They had teachers. Um, they would also show the products, of course. I think you had to sign up ahead of time online and pay the fee that included the class and the materials. This is a shop that had this interesting fabric that was like a sticker. You could peel it off from the back and then use it for crafting. You can see those furnitures are covered in that uh, type of fabric, super expensive. This was a quilt, ex um, like a show of quilts that's, that people have made. Very nice things. Look at those flowers there. I don't even know how that can be made by hand. It's amazing. Um, these ladies were making bags, so they're all doing the same thing. They were all on show, like all these classes had like just glass and everyone was looking at them doing their things. I would have felt so self-conscious. Um, I found a place that had a few fabrics. Those are some linens, or natural fibers there. Um, I did purchase a few things there. Um, they had stands of all the sewing machine brands. Janome's stand was quite big had all all the machines that you could look and you can use them and try them and people would explain that is my little machine right there <laughs> i just love my sewing machine i i would like to have that overlocker that's next to it but i'm quite happy with the one i have so uh, it didn't make me suffer uh, there was a stand there that was just for uh, wholesalers basically but the decoration using those ribbons was amazing 
so I was just like oh I wish I could have just bought them all you know but they weren't for sale they were just for decoration <laughs> here there was a class where people were uh, like drawing on little pieces of wood with these special pens with special ink uh, I found that interesting this is when you have cracked pieces of ceramic and then you stick them together to make uh, little shapes so they were all gluing their little pieces on there um, stuff to make handbags you know those clasps they sold those there I would not know how to do that the singer stand had these monster machines they amazing machines lots of people um, they would they were selling machines and they offered to like give you as a gift some jewelry if you bought a machine <laughs> so that was interesting look at those monster machines I don't even know want to know how expensive those are but they had the normal ones too like a normal home overlocker like that one uh, brother had a stand and they were making a big fuss about the uh, scan and cut machine it's like those those machines that cut your fabric for you there seemed to be quite a lot of interest with that product they also had sewing things like needles and things there is a class being prepared so the lady there is cleaning the benches from the hot glue gun stuff that the other ladies left from the previous class so everyone got a kit with all the supplies I was so excited to find Ofa because my rotary cutter is that brand and I've been looking for a replacement blade but it was a disappointment because the price was so inflated. Look at those huge industrial machines. I've never tried to sew on an industrial. I think they scare, they scare me a little bit but it would be interesting to do that just to try. Lots and lots of quilting cottons. This shop had really really nice cottons and I really tried not to get sucked in with the prints. I think I did a good job. <laughs> now this my this shop got me into trouble. They were selling older editions of Berta style. So yeah, I did get into a little bit of trouble in there. Look at those things to hang your spools of thread. If I was someone that liked to expose my things, I would be all over that. But I'd rather keep my threads tucked away where I can't see them. These are those pens that erase, like they disappear. He is a sewing class. The um, bird I was putting up sewing classes. Um, everyone would sew the, the same thing and have the same fabric. These are handmade dolls. Um, not my thing. I appreciate the work that goes into that, but I wouldn't really be making dolls. The owner of the shop was so glamorous in her dress. And um, this I found interesting. It's like a laser thing where she made a flower in basically a few seconds. She put all the petals together, she put the leaf, it's some sort of fabric. She held it there with some sort of thing and then just burnt the bottom there with that thing. And then voila, she had a perfect flower in like three seconds basically. Here more ladies crocheting. Now I want you to hear the real sounds there was. It was quite loud, everything was super loud. Some of the stands had their own DJs. Um, yeah, so all oh, that little iron was so cute, but just hear the sounds now of the normal This stand is selling handmade soaps Here they were giving away a brother scan and cut so someone won that and everyone was screaming it was crazy Yeah, so that's me slowly making my way out after seven hours of walking. I didn't buy that many things, but I was quite happy with the things I found. Now going outside, so many people, so many buses. It was a mega event, really. Mega artisanal, the mega word is in the full sense of the word, mega, huge. As you can see, the areas are 
was so diverse in <clears throat> any craft you can imagine from metalwork, woodwork, like everything, softy stuff, little cute dolls, soaps, bag making, like the works, everything was there. Now in the sewing aspect, it was more geared to, towards quilting and patchwork. And there was so many, so many shops selling supplies for that. I did take advantage because most of the supplies that, that quilters use, uh, we use too, you know? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I was really restrained in the fabric area. Most of the fabric shops there were selling quilting cottons or cottons, like um, really nice cottons, really nice prints. But that's not a type of fabric I use a lot in my sewing. Um, so I wasn't really, I didn't really want to look that much because I get, I might get sucked in with the prints. So I sort of just sort of whizzed past and looked a little bit. So I'll start with the fabrics I did get. Um, I found three shops that sold some garment fabric as well, along with the billion other cottons, you know? So um, I got some denim, and now I've been looking for stretch denim in this shade of blue for a long time. You've seen me make denim things, and they're usually made out of really dark blue denim, and this is like a medium, uh, medium weight denim, stretch denim and it's very nice so um, I bought this thinking of myself and my son uh, I'm gonna make something out of that I like having denim I like I, if I don't have denim in my stash I feel really weird so I don't mind adding denim to my stash because denim projects always comes come along especially for my son um, then I got this green I, I wouldn't know how to describe this but like velvet I don't know if you can see but it's you know it's got a nap so um, I got a meter and 20. This was in a little uh, remnants bin. It still got tape there. Uh, it was all taped together, I don't know why. But it was 1.2 meters there and I bought it. And I think I'm gonna make a skirt out of this. Um, it, it looks like leather, but it's not, you know? It's just, and it's got like the same texture on both sides. I really can't tell which is the right and the wrong. We shall have to decide on one. Um, then I got this really good quality stretch cotton, um, sort of like denim weight cotton, and it's purple. It's like a royal dark purple, and I love this color. Super hard to find fabric this color, and it's got some uh, horizontal stretch, not much, but you know, enough to make wearing clothes comfortable. So I only got tiny P70 centimeters, which is enough for a skirt for me. Um, I mean, the way I like to make them. Um, I found some linen, and then rayon linen mixed with viscose, whatever. It's super, super drapey, super nice, and it's like gray with little stripes. And I think a pair of shorts um, would be super versatile and super fresh for the summer. Um, so that's what I got it for. I also got a little piece, like 80 centimeters. Um, then I got some cottons, <laughs> just because. Now I found this one, and I, I found that super cute. It's black and it's got beige little measuring uh, tapes. Look at that. Look at all the numbers. They go across. So totally seamstress vibes. So um, I want to use this in my sewing room um, to make a cover for the chair that I sit on while I'm sewing. I've been meaning to do that for ages. But um, when I saw this fabric, I knew it was the perfect fabric <laughs> to make a cover for my chair, you know? And um, I have two pieces of cotton. Now these cottons were, um, I don't know, they, they were on the cheaper end and I bought them for muslins or twirls. Uh So yeah, nothing special here. Black with tiny, tiny, tiny white polka dots. So I got a meter of that and I got a meter of this other cotton. Um, it's like, I don't know, snake skin snakes <laughs> so I like the combination of colors how it's got like orange tones and blue tones with the black and the white um, yeah I don't know I, I got this cotton just because I liked it I have no idea what I can make with it um, prop when I have a print that's like too much in your face I'm quite happy to wear it on my lower half so you know skirt or shorts yeah <laughs> But I mean, these two cottons are so soft. They're so, so nice. I have to wash them. But the weather is not cooperating. Um, it's pouring rain. So I'm gonna have to wait until the weather's good so I can wash these. Because if I hang them out to dry, they'll never dry, you know. And then the last, 
my last piece of fabric I got was a lot of denim. <laughs> so this is, you know, cotton, um, raw denim, no stretch anywhere. It's totally, you know, no stretch. And I got three meters because I need some denim with no stretch for a special project I'm working on. Um, so I'm going to do a 12 for that project first and then I'm going to use this as a definite fabric once I get the feet right. Um, so yeah, I got a lot of that and it wasn't that expensive. Um, this, this was in um, a store that was like the vendors were the manufacturers of the fabric. So that's why the prices were super accessible compared to my local shops, you know, around here. And then I got a lot of little gadgets I'd been really needing. Um, so I have this uh, rotary, Ofa rotary cutter, 45 millimeter blade. I've had this for many years. And when I bought it, I bought like three blades to go along with it to replace. And I got onto my last blade that doesn't cut anymore. It's just, <laughs> so I've been using this to cut um, paper, you know, when I'm assembling PDFs or cutting out pattern pieces or whatever. But I was really missing it to cut fabric because it's so practical, you know, especially for the thin, silky things that I like to work with. Um, but at the at the expo, they had a, a stand for Ofa, and the price was, I mean, the prices were insane. One blade, like one little blade was like 20 US dollars, the equivalent to that in, in local currency here, which is ridiculous. So I, I thought, you know what, I'm not going to spend that. So I bought these. So I bought four types. They're supposed to be like universal to fit any rotary cutter. They told me they fit the one I have. So I bought four types of like knockoffs, you know, made in different areas like Taiwan and uh, I think the other one's made in Korea. Anyway, I, sh I will see. They're all diverse uh, qualities as well, different price ranges. All of them way under what I would have paid for one blade. So we shall see. We shall see. Then um, I've been looking for those little clip thingies that you can use on certain types of fabric. Because um, I'd never ever seen them anywhere, like locally, live where I shop. So I got these little clips that are going to be super good for like thick layers and slippery fabrics and when I really don't want to use pins. So I got two little bags of that. I'm always losing my pins and I couldn't find good pins around here locally. They were just more, like they were more for quilting thick pins. And I wanted those thin little pins that I use and I'm losing them like daily, all the time. I was also getting really anxious because I only had one twin needle and I'm thinking any day something's going to break or I just can't use it anymore. And I could not find one anywhere. So I got another one. <laughs> and I know now where I can order some online. And the last two little gadgets, oh no, I've got three more. I bought bias tape makers. Little plastic gadgets so this blue one is for the 25 millimeter and this one is for the 18 millimeter so I've got one wider and one thinner so yeah I've got I've got specific projects I want to make small amounts of bias tape because I would never go and make like meters and meters that's just not my jam but for special things I can make up to two meters and I'm happy you know um, I also got this ruler so um, the other day I bought uh, in another city but around here I bought some wooden rulers that are going to be really good curved and all sorts of things but now I bought this transparent one which is going to be super good for like um, marking hems, hem allowances you know I don't do seam allowances but anyway it's got all these little curves and it's going to be really practical and I hadn't found one locally that was like this you know transparent and then, the best part of it all, there was a shop there uh, by Berda. So Berda Brazil publishes the same Berda that is published in Europe. Uh, the content of the magazine is the same, but they sometimes switch around the cover. And it's published six months later, so that it matches our season, you know. And I, I got seven that were at super mega discounted price because they're older editions. And look at these little white papers, it's because that's to mark the things that I like in them. <laughs> so by the end of the afternoon, I went into that, that, it was a big, big store. I was so exhausted, I sat on the floor, I grabbed a pile, I'm not kidding you, this big. And I just sat in a corner 
and I told one of the girls that was uh, vending there, I'm just gonna sit here and look at them and choose the ones I want. She's like, yeah, yeah, just take your time. So I must have been there for like an hour flipping through magazines and my thing is if I'm gonna buy a magazine, there has to be at least three or four patterns in there that I love. Um, usually these come with 50 but combining the kids ones, the ones that are not for you or like, you know, whatever. <laughs> For me, I need to have at least three or four to make it worthwhile to buy them. And so, um, yeah, these these are from, ranging from 2014 to 2017, so older editions, but I find that with Berta, things don't really go out of style. The, the things they have here, you can be wearing. I, I mean, at least for my, for what I like, you know? So I think for these seven magazines, I ended up paying like $12 or something like that. Ridiculous. <laughs> So yeah, value for money, <laughs> lots of patterns. Um, yeah, I'm really excited to dive in there and get the patterns that I like. So the roaming around started at about 11 uh, in the morning and we left at six. So I personally was walking practically nonstop for seven hours. And yeah, I could totally feel it by the end of the day. My knees, you know, my calves, the muscles were aching. <laughs> I did go with like running shoes as comfortable as I could. But yeah, this morning I woke up and I'm, I'm aching. But you know, body aches for the sake of going to a craft expo is totally worth it. Needless to say, I slept like a rock. <laughs> yeah, good fun, good fun. I'm super happy I went. So that is all I had to share with you. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me. Um, I tried to film what interests me and what could be interest like super different, you know? Um, so I hope that six minute video wasn't too long to watch. <laughs> um, like the video if you enjoyed it. Uh, subscribe as well if you've enjoyed some of the videos that I've been making and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out when I upload. Have fun sewing, bye, see you soon.